Time Magazine once called Lucinda Williams America's best songwriter, and her newest release is one of her most ambitious. A Grammy-winning performer has a new double album out called The Ghosts of Highway 20 that explores the intersection of her personal and family history with that famous stretch of road. The seed was planted really when I went back to Macon, Georgia to perform at the original Cox Theater in downtown Macon where the Arm Brothers played back in the day. And I was amazed at how little had changed in downtown Macon. And then my mind, went, of course, went back to, you know, when I was younger and we lived there. And my dad had taken me downtown to see a blues artist by the name of Blonde Pearly Brown, who was inspired and influenced by Blonde Willie Johnson and used to play on the streets of Macon. And slide guitar, blues, you know, gospel blues music. And that was when probably I was about five or six. And then the other pivotal moment was when uh, my dad went to meet with Flannery O'Connor in Milledgeville, Georgia, which is near Macon. And he took me with him. So even though I was only five or six years old, those things, you know, permeated you know, my mind and kind of just absorbed that at such an early age. As we were leaving Macon, I'm looking out the tour bus window and I see exit signs for all these towns and suddenly realizing it's kind of a big circle, you know, and kind of look at the song, The Ghost of Highway 20, as Car Wheels on a Gravel Road, Part Two. Hmm. You know, kind of going back and looking back again, but as an woman who's older now, you know, um, when I wrote Car Wheels, both my parents were still living, you know, now I'm writing Ghost of Highway 20 with both of my parents gone as an older woman, you know, so, but I've always written about highways and roads and when you look at all of the, like the artists you mentioned and, you know, Hank Williams, for instance, you know, Lost Highway, his song, and Kerouac's On the Road, and Woody Guthrie, and the you know, hobos on the trains, you know. There's so much a part of that in American culture. And I also mm -hmm. find it fascinating, you, you mentioned your, your mom, you mentioned your brother, you mentioned your dad, and mm -hmm. they all sort of seem to pop up on this album in one way or another, yeah. in this song, Dust. Uh, your father, uh, Miller Williams, great poet, you know, mm -hmm. read a poem at the uh, one, of, one of Clinton's inaugurals, yeah. and you drew from his poems to write that song. Tell me a bit about how you, how you did that as yeah. a songwriter. Well, that, the song is actually from his poem called Dust. And um, the first time I took one of his poems and made it into a song was on the last album, yeah from his poem, Compassion. And so it's, and it was quite challenging, because it's not easy. You can't just throw a melody on the poem. You have to take the words in the poem and, you know, rearrange them into some kind of song with a, you know, some kind of an arrangement with a refrain or of some kind, you know, or something like that. So I'd been wanting to do it for a long time and hadn't been successful at it. And, I managed to finally do it with compassion, which inspired me to then, you know, try it with this poem, Dust. And what I find interesting, on and Dust, though, you do make one sort of word change. I'm wondering if, if that was key for you, where in the poem it's, even your thoughts are dry. And in, 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 your, in your music version, it's, even your thoughts are dust. Why did you make you know, even that one that word I've change? I that I've done that. You're the only person who's asked me about that. And I forgot I did that. And do you know why, though, thinking back? Or why would you make that I just that liked it better. Huh. You know, I thought it fit. I love the image of dust, and I love the, the sound of dust. And I don't know, it just fit, you know? Well, th this is one line from a, a prose piece that your father wrote where he says, We live in a haunted world. We are surrounded by ghosts. Reminders of past and nearly forgotten days are all about us. And thinking wow. that it seems to have some resonance with Ghosts yes. of Highway 20, doesn't it? It does. Well, my father and I were very close. 
You know, we had a special bond from the time I was born. And that's interesting. I hadn't even, you know, consciously made that connection. And Place but, in My Heart, another very emotional song on this album, mm -hmm. which could be about a lot of things. And I'm wondering, does it have any connection, a family connection? Is yeah. it I've read that you, you and your brother are a little bit are, are estranged. Does, does it speak to that in some well, way? Well, he's kind of estranged himself. You know, he had, he's always had, when we were growing, you know, as soon as he became, you know, a teenager and, and you know, or as soon as he was out of school, he would disappear, you know, for a year and nobody in the family would know where he was or if he was dead or alive and you know he just always had a tendency to kind of go into a shell or something you know I've talked about the mental illness that you know runs through my family from my mother and um but is the song kind of a like a welcome it's home a matter song I wrote it you know thinking about my brother you know because I love him dearly he's brilliant hmm. I, I mean that makes about the fourth song I've written with him in mind. You know, mm -hmm. Little Angel, Little Brother, Are You All Right, mm -hmm. This One, Place in My Heart. You know, it's kind of my way of saying, sending him a message, you know, I'm always going to be there for you. There's a place in my heart I got room to spare There's a place in my heart I made room for you there but, but on House of Earth, you sort of go outside the family and to another family, the Woody Guthrie family. Right. And they actually reached out to you to sort of set some of his lyrics yes. to music. It was really interesting the way that happened. I'd performed at this festival in, in Germany and met Nora Guthrie there because her husband is from Germany and he runs this festival. So they spend part of their time there. And I'd never, we'd never met before. And, we really hit it off, and hmm. then later, she sent me um, the lyrics to this song that Woody had written, but or a set of lyrics, but he hadn't put music to him yet. And she s explained at the same time. She said, "Now, when you read these, you're gonna, you might be kind of shocked. You know, it's a little risque. You know, it's not something you would expect from Woody Guthrie. You know, for that time." Sure enough, when I read them, I went, wow, okay. But she said, if anybody could do it, I thought you would be the one. And I just wanted to know if you were up for it. And I, said, and I got back with her and I said, yeah, let me see what I can do. And it didn't take me that long, actually, to come up with the music. But, um, you know, House of Earth. Now, one of the interpretations is, of course, the song is about a prostitute. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's a very open-minded view of prostitution, and it's from the perspective of the prostitute who's saying, you know, let me teach you these things, and then you could go home and show your wife. <laughs> I wasn't sure, you know, like she in the song it says, come to my house of earth, and I had read somewhere that Woody Guthrie, as he traveled farther west, he discovered the adobe houses, you know, houses of earth. And he was impressed with these adobe structures because they didn't blow down in the wind. You know, like the fragile wooden houses in Oklahoma. And the, my husband Tom at one point said, I think the house of earth is the prostitute also, hmm. you know. So it's a pretty complex song for Woody Guthrie. It's not your, it's not this land is your land, you know? <laughs> uh, now you said that that, that song you know, came pretty quickly to you. There's mm -hmm. another song on the album that's about your, your father and his passing from, from Alzheimer's, um, uh, If My Love Could Kill. Yes. And that took you years to get right. Well, I came up, what that was, was I came up with, with that line, If My Love Could Kill, years ago. And I was trying to make some kind of song out of it, but it just never, never came to fruition. It just never really gelled or happened until, you know, my father succumbed to Alzheimer's and then that did it, you know. 
But I had that little kind of hook line thing for a long time. Well, listen so. to Williams. The, the, the album is The Ghosts of Highway 20. Thanks a lot for coming to the Wall Street Journal. I appreciate Thanks it. Thanks for having Thanks. me. I enjoyed it. <laughs> you have a place in my heart.